Good morning, everyone. I'm going to have everybody, looks like everybody's seated and ready to go. And uh, usually we ask if anybody's new. Don't see, it looks like I see all familiar faces here this morning. Uh, but if you're new to uh, um, Facebook or YouTube, uh, welcome. And I know you will enjoy the, the service uh, we're going to present to you this morning. Today is December 3rd. Uh, this is the Center for Spiritual Living, Visalia. Welcome, and uh, I'd like to go ahead and uh, introduce uh, Reverend Jackie for our opening prayer. And we just take a deep centering breath, knowing that we are in this space at the, at the right moment, at the right time. And we know that this service today is blessed. We know that each person within this service space and online hear what they need to hear so that they can move on in their life in a fully productive and whole way. We recognize those figures who have left this plane of existence over the last few weeks, those who have had a great impact on our country. Henry Kissinger, Sandra Day O'Connor, Rosalind Carter. We bless their lives and how they have impacted us in this world. And we carry on, we carry on. And so now I let everything go and open up to spirit who is always activated in each one of us. Thank you, spirit. And so it is. And now, and now I'm going to introduce our first music. Take it away. I'm stepping out into a world of possibility. I'm stepping out into a whole new way to live. There's so much waiting for me. The path is clear before me. I've got so much that I have yet to give. I'm stepping out and I'm committed to integrity. I'm stepping out, releasing every fear and doubt. The road just keeps on turning. And every turn I'm learning. I'm learning what this life is all about. I'm stepping out into a world of possibility. I'm stepping out into a whole new way to live. So much waiting for me. The path is clear before me. I've got so much that I have yet to give. I'm stepping out and I'm related to integrity. I'm stepping out really. keeps on turning and every turn i'm learning i'm learning what this life is all about i'm stepping out one more time i'm stepping out into a world of possibility i'm stepping out into a whole new way to live so much waiting for me for me I've got so much that I have yet to give I'm stepping out and I'm committing to integrity I'm stepping out releasing every fear and doubt the road just keeps on turning and every turn I'm yearning I'm learning what this life is all about
Wow, that was pretty exciting. Got, got us going. All right, I like that a lot. So I want to pull back so you can see our wonderful decorations. Aren't they amazing? So thank you to Donna and Steve Kinshu, and then Maria came and did all this gorgeous stuff in the middle. So we got, we got decorators here. Thank you so much. <laughs> What? Whatever you're saying, Willie, I don't want to hear it. Oh, I help too. I help too. <laughs> so, oh, and we also, over in the corner, we, Steve is really trying to clear this place out. So if you want any Christmas stuff, look through here. We, we, he, we got rid of all the first stuff, and Steve dumped what was left. So now this is all Christmas decorations. Not the stuff on the not on the stuff on the podium, no. But on the table, lots of extra stuff that we'll probably never use. So if you're interested, please take it. <laughs> okay, today is birthday Sunday. We have any December birthdays? Who? <laughs> what? Oh, you do. <laughs> Janice's birthday. What? Which day is yours? Oh, after Christmas. Okay. And who? Bill? Your birthday? The 13th, December 13th. All right. So, so Phil gets to play his own um, birthday song. So let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Jennifer Bill. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. And many more. And we have cake, so be, stay afterwards and enjoy and say happy birthday. Now, Florence just told me that last night, Stan who did the opening that today, just won a wonderful award from the Smooth Dancers. Woo! <laughs> Stan. Stan the man. All right. So congratulations, Stan. There, he's waving. Okay, now we'll go to our announcements. So Explorers is today, and we're going to talk about forgiveness. Explorers is a wonderful discussion group. You know how much you, those, a lot of you are enjoying the SOM chats before service. Well, Explorers is in a little deeper maybe way, but we talk about fascinating things and things in Christianity, things in the new thought, all kinds of great things. And we thank so much, Evelyn, for keeping us going on this. So today, stay, go out and have lunch, come back and, and meet with us and we'll talk about forgiveness. Um, so we're supposed to... Um, think of something that we've forgiven or haven't forgiven or what and how we talk about it. And we'll talk about what it's like in the bu bu biblical, biblical texts. So come back. It's a wonderful thing. Okay, we have two wonderful concerts. And we need to sell tickets. So the one next Saturday is Donna W. and Bruce. They're going... <laughs> They've been practicing. The music is so wonderful. I just love it. The trio's been practicing with them. We're going to do a few little things. And um, they're going to do special music today. So just to give you a preview, so we started a new uh, friend, friend, what are we calling our group? Friend raising group. And one of the things we've talked about is let's bring back special music on occasion. Get other people in here. We always so much fun. We have such a wonderful band, and Hope and Don, you guys are wonderful. But we give you a break once in a while if we can find special music. So Donna and Bruce are going to do it for us today. So Maria is selling tickets. If you haven't bought your ticket, please buy one, two, four, ten. We want to, and and bring your friends. It'll be a great a great evening. We're going to have cookies and three, two for oh. Maria's telling, she's doing this to me. So we are doing two-for-one um, tickets for seniors. So if you're selling tickets to seniors, 
you can buy, they can buy two, one, they can buy one ticket for $20 and two people can come. Because it's old fashioned, wonderful music that I think they'll especially love. And our next concert, actually it's not a concert, it's the Mistletoe Jam Party. And we have this wonderful Jesse who does second time around records. He has an entire house full of vinyl records that he's been collecting since he was four or six or something. And he came here, he was here for our hot August nights when we had a r fun dance party and he was spinning records. Well, this time it'll be spinning more of Christmas kind of records. They're bringing all kinds of food. We're doing this with We Art, which is the, which is the multicultural group that started out at Arts by Celia. And we're also doing it with Arts by Celia. So there'll be food, there'll be great music, dancing, listening, whatever you want. And then they're also doing some interesting drawings. And there'll be some interest, good vendors here too. So you can, you can get um, um, jewelry. And I think Donna's and Steve's daughter are going to bring some of her homemade jewelry. It's made with safety pins, all right. Actually, I think we had some, last Christmas we had some fascinating jewelry. The back was all safety pins. So that can be pretty. <laughs> yes? Okay, Sean says it's easy to buy tickets online. So they are on our website. Just go on our website and to events, and there's a button right there to buy your tickets. Okay, so, oh, he's to the next one. <laughs> he's uh, moving along here. One more time, I want to let you know that Reverend Donna, who's our wonderful part-time minister now, is available if you ever need to talk, counseling, prayer, whatever you want. Her contacts are right there. They're also on the back table, so you can take a sheet, so you'll have it for you if you ever want to contact her. She's a delight, as those of you who have heard her and seen her in person. And she will be back um, next week, I think. Week, yeah, next week. And she'll be here in person on occasion. So keep her in mind. She's our minister to go to. And I wanted to show this. <laughs> If you saw the newsletter, one of the things our friend raising group has talked about now is we, during our town hall meeting, we had some people tell us how they first came here and how much it's meant to them. So Florence had a wonderful story, so we chose her to do our first one. If you didn't see it in the newsletter, look it, look it up. It came out, um, it came out Thursday. And if you don't get it, uh, I'll check again, but you're supposed to be on our mailing list. It doesn't always come. Sometimes it goes to spam and also puts it on our website. So if you're not getting it, you can see it on our website. So Florence has this wonderful story about how she came here and couldn't believe the philosophy hit her and fit her, and she cried the whole time. I'm still not quite sure why she cried the whole time, but, but it really meant something to her. And we're going to keep doing these stories because we want to get the word out how wonderful this place is. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over to Bobby. Bobby is going to do our diversity talk today. Good morning. Um, good morning. Um, can you hear me? How's that? <laughs> okay. This is um, my quote um, by John Cabot Jinn. Um, you are whole and also part of larger and larger circle circles of wholeness you may not even know about. You are never alone, and you already belong. You belong to humanity. You belong to life. You belong to this moment, this breath. And this is by John Cabot Zinn. He's internationally known for his work as a scientist, writer, and meditation teacher. And the quote, really spoke to me and made me feel more whole. I hope it makes you feel more whole too. And um, you can check him out on the internet 
there are various um, little YouTube videos, short meditation exercises. So thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Whoever I didn't see. We had a wonderful chat this morning, so I invite you to come. We had 12 people, and um, let's see, Sean asked what the decorum was, and we said not much. Yeah. So uh, I think that you will enjoy that. You'll enjoy the, uh, um, the, the camaraderie. So now for our, there it is. I am made in the image of the divine, living a whole life. And please say that with me. I am living in the name of the divine, living a whole life. Okay, thank you. And before I go into my uh, prayer, I would talk about, I would like to just say a couple of things about living a whole life. We, each of us have a tendency to think that the idea of wholeness is the idea of, of uh, physical perfection, and it's not. It is the idea of divine perfection, and we are that at birth. And I'm really dealing with that a lot myself because I'm going to have hip replacement the second time on this hip. So um, it's kind of brings me to that point, and do I see myself as less? Or do I see myself as being whole? That I am whole, that it doesn't matter, that that is, that is not the truth of who I am. That is not me. But I want to tell you, sometimes the concept of wholeness is not that easy to accept. And I'm, I'm trying to be a person who is vulnerable, so I will tell you this story. I don't think I told you this story before. Uh, I was uh, taking a bath uh, for the last time a couple of weeks ago, and I could not get out of the bathtub. So my husband is trying to help me get out of the bathtub, and he says, what do you want me to do? And I said, I had no idea. <laughs> Where do you want me to pull? I don't know. <laughs> so I think as I thought about it uh, more, I was, um, I realized, you know, you really got to get out of here because you do not want those EMTs coming and with your luck, it will be one of your ex-students. <laughs> I've had several students who became EMTs, and I could just see them. Well, Mrs. Lehman. You know. <laughs> so anyway, I think wholeness is something that we all um, that that we all struggle with the idea of that perfection that we think we're supposed to attain, and that yet we are always perfect, whole, and complete, because we are from spirit. So with that, I'd like you to just settle back in your chair. As I sit here today, I am so aware of the beauty of this season, the, the beauty of the leaves that are still on the trees, the beauty of the center, the work that has gone into making this a beautiful place all of the people who have contributed. What a blessing it is to come here in the morning and see all of this beauty. And this beauty, this joy, this peace comes from spirit. And I know that I too come from spirit as each of us does. And I recognize that as our service goes on, that we become more and more aware of the perfection that we are, of the wholeness that each of us is. And that in doing that, we accept ourselves as we are, and that we also accept each other because we can provide that love and support 
for each other. What a blessing that is to be able to do that. I release my word knowing that it is so. And we say together, and so it is. And now another song. Please sing along with us. We have come together as a family. We have come here as we are. We have come. Good morning, CSL Visalia. It's so good to be back with you again. This is Reverend Jackie. I'm speaking to you from a snowy Colorado foothills. Uh, it's beautiful out here and it's cold. 
So um, we're going to warm things up here this morning, and we're going to be talking about how to embrace wholeness. That The theme for the entire month for, for Centers for Spiritual Living is on wholeness, and this is just the entrance to that piece. And I want to tie in some things that will also tie it into the holidays for you. So I want to start off reminding you of the quote if you went online to your website there are quotes for each week and the quote for this week is from Eric Butterworth who wrote spiritual economics and I'm going to just remind you of the last part of that quote which says you are whole now this wholeness is the only way the universe knows you how do you like that? It's the only way the universe or the divine knows you is wholeness. And I heard some of what Janice was talking about, and I want to just say that wholeness is a complex and a very personal issue that we don't spend a lot of time thinking about. So I'm going to have you close your eyes right now. And I want you to look deeply within yourself and see if you can see your wholeness. What does it look like? If you're a visual person, it may be a color. It could be a feeling. It could be words. And don't feel badly if it feels like nothing. I introduce you to that and open your eyes now because we don't spend much time going into our interior selves. We spend so much time out in uh, the world and looking with our eyes to the outside, but everything we need is within us. So I'm going to encourage you to regularly take that inner journey and just enjoy what spirit, what the universe, what the divine has to say to you. You know, wholeness becomes complex because it involves all of what makes us human. Our mind, our body, our soul, our emotions, and even our relationships. All of the experiences that have shaped us and we know that none of these can be scientifically studied in a vacuum, put under a microscope, or dissected. That is what makes the inner journey to wholeness challenging, because it is personal. A lot of times we think that wholeness is equivalent to perfection. And we're going to, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that idea later, but I want you to just keep that thought in mind. Also, sometimes when we're thinking about wholeness, we look at the opposites. And I will tell you, if you choose to do that, it's a little scary. If you go on the internet and you look for the opposite of wholeness, you'll find words like illness, ailment, infirmity. I don't think any of us want to live in that space, but that is one piece to me of the opposite of wholeness also. And as was mentioned earlier, to the everyday person, you and I, wholeness is seen most often as physical well-being and perfection, but is that all there is? I think all of us are naturally drawn to wholeness and, and really when we're not in perfect health, we have a tendency to be pulled away somewhat from wholeness. So I'm going to tell you what wholeness looks like for me. It looks like peace. It looks like joy. And it looks like unconditional love because wholeness is each one of our birthrights. 
when we stay in wholeness, it keeps us from spinning out of control. I'm sure none of you have ever had that happen to you, but it keeps us from spinning out of control when things in our surroundings don't show up the way we expected or wanted. It's realizing everything that shows up has a purpose, and that purpose is for my greater evolution, and that it is important for my ultimate wholeness. Now, that's easier to say, and it's a lot more difficult for us to practice. And the holiday time of year gives us many opportunities to practice seeing wholeness within ourselves and around us. Think about when you're out shopping and standing in lines or dealing with the push and shove of getting that toy, that gift, that last one that's on the shelf. What an opportunity to think about your wholeness. What about getting together for social events when there's always a lot of activity going on? And especially, we just finished Thanksgiving, when we get together with family, it's also the perfect opportunity to practice wholeness. So think about those as you move through this holiday time. Am I practicing wholeness? How am I showing up? Am I showing up in wholeness, or am I showing up in scatteredness? In the Science of Mind, textbook Ernest Holmes says life is one perfect wholeness God is one it is impossible for man to feel separated from the spirit without feeling lost and in want it is only as we live in conscious union with the spirit and consciously let it work through us that we really live and I would say, we might want to say that at these moments, we are whole. That's why I'm saying to you, it's so important that you do your interior work. A life of wholeness th flows through our experience because it first must flow through our consciousness. That's where wholeness starts, in our consciousness. Where is your consciousness? Someone has coined a word holing, W-H-O-L-I-N-G. So healing and holing comes from a place where you finally come to the realization there's nothing to be fixed because there's nothing that's broken. People don't break. They get hurt and then they heal. This doesn't mean that the damage never existed. It means that we no longer allow it to define us. Wholeness is not a place where there's no pain, trouble, or hard work. Wholeness means being in the midst of all of life's challenges and still remembering you are whole and complete. Wholeness does not mean perfection. As we talked about earlier, it means embracing your brokenness as an integral part of your life. And it's in this radical, authentic, soul-aligned way of living that we find we can belong everywhere we go. Because we belong to and with ourselves. Let's call this a journey home to self. I've been on this journey home to myself for quite some time now. And when I'm conscious, remember, wholeness starts in consciousness, I find joy in the journey. I found it safe to be myself and let myself be seen. Being vulnerable, as Janice mentioned. It's safe to soften myself and trust my feelings rather than raging mental war with what I'm, I'm feeling. Now, I'm guessing none of you have ever done that. Relive, relive, relive the past. But we don't want to rage that mental war if we want to stay in wholeness. 
because when I am in this place, I am my truly authentic self as well as whole. So how can we embrace wholeness every day? You can Google anything now. I think back in the dark ages, you know, the time of the dinosaurs, when the way that you got any information was in encyclopedias. Oh my gosh, now it's 24 seven, which can be overwhelming, but it's so easy to get onto the internet and look up things that you're curious about. So here's some suggestions I found from various sources, and you can see if any of them work for you. Oprah has a piece called the Oprah Daily, which is a great, it's like a blog, different people will write on it daily. And from there, I found from a Catherine Morgan Schaffler, she says to forget perfection. She says, to me, wholeness is the divine and unbreakable part of myself that will always exist within me. Always exist within me. It's the source of my power and presence. I've abandoned the quest to obliterate all my flaws so that I can become my, air quotes, higher self. I've also worked to stop over identifying with the parts of me that continue to repeat mistakes. And I love this. She says, is that my lower self? Or maybe it's my regular self. She says, I've learned to see myself as a whole human being without a best self or a worse self or any other such identity. Can you do this? I think it takes relaxing, getting rid of that perfectionist tendency and letting yourself be yourself. The second is letting stuff go. Kristen Sudeikis says that wholeness effortlessly reveals itself when we turn inward and turn into the divine design that already resides within us. Take the inward journey, folks. She says when she places her full attention on what is within rather than on what she may think is without or what she is without, wholeness reveals itself. She says an important thing to do in this tuning in piece in order to be able to let the stuff go is when you feel you're most alive and you're most at ease, tune in to your inner self and keep going in that direction. Let the other stuff go. And then there's find your people and your place. Tay Nahisi Coates says wholeness is simple. It's being at home with family. It comes down to finding the place and people that allow you to be the most you. And of course, as you're looking at this, you want to nourish yourself in every way, including food. And a good diet goes a long way to helping your wholeness. But what about spending time away from the screens? Putting down your phone, letting go of that iPad, not going to Google everything. How about spending time in nature? And I can tell you living in the foothills, that is the great, one of the greatest gifts, is being able to step into nature. It is restorative and a reminder that we are part of a larger universe. I began reading a new book this year uh, by an author, Larita Coleman Brown, and the book is called What Makes You Come Alive, and it's a spiritual walk with Howard Thurman, and she does a beautiful job of taking his writing and then putting it into present um, explanation. So again, it's called What Makes You Come Alive, a spiritual walk with Howard Thurman. 
Howard Thurman left us with the message that nature is a balm, B-A-L-M, for the soul that seeks reconciliation and wholeness. Seeing manifestations of sacred unity everywhere, he says, is a powerful gift we can receive whenever we go outside. So, so far, we've talked about forgetting perfection, letting stuff go, finding your people and your place. And next, we're going to talk about staying curious. One of my favorite things, because uh, children do it so well. You know, I always think of watching children who see a worm and they sit and they examine it. They watch it. And you'll see me now and then looking away. And it's because I'm looking to the outside where nature is for me right here. So curiosity is important for us in our wholeness. And Elisa Hallerman defines wholeness as a continuous, what she calls growing down process that helps you make what is unknown known. Think of that child. What is unconscious conscious. It is not about perfection or arriving at a specific destination, she says. Rather, it's about the pursuit of meaning meaning, following the directives of the soul and connecting the wisdom of your inner world. She created a methodology that she calls soulbriety, S-O-U-L-B-R-I-E-T-Y. She says it requires deep listening, insatiable curiosity, a thorough understanding of your personal values, and the willingness to clearly see your own issues. She says wholeness is achieved by following the soul journey. Hear that inner journey talk? Pausing in the darkness and applying a different way of knowing and allowing our pain to be changed into purpose. And then we have trust yourself. Melissa Urban generally speaks to women, but I think what she has said here speaks to all of us. So you may be familiar with Melissa Urban uh, in with some women's work. We're often told to look to others for guidance on our journey to be well and whole. She says, wholeness means checking in with myself first to ask, what do I need? How do I feel? Where is my comfort? She says, I am worthy of prioritizing my feelings, needs, and comfort and can trust myself to know what's best for me. And here is one of my favorite Howard Thurman quotes. There is something in every one of you that waits and listens for the sound of the genuine in yourself. It is the only true guide you will ever have. And if you cannot hear it, you will all of your life spend your days on the ends of strings that somebody else pulls. You know yourself better than anyone else. Remember, you have that inner guide. Go to that inner space. Elise Lonen from Oprah's Daily says from her the journey from wellness to wholeness, and it's a blog she's written. The promise of wholeness is quite beautiful, precisely because its fulfillment does not live out there anywhere. Wholeness is only something we can judge. There are no exterior standards to validate this achievement. Remember, it's not scientific. You can't see it under a microscope. There's no one to tell us we've arrived, that we're done, that we look whole. There's no prescribed checklist, folks. Wholeness is an interior sense of feeling in integrity and of feeling complete. Howard Thurman believed that God should be our basis for self-esteem or wholeness. 
with God as that basis, he believed a person gains a sense of wholeness and an inner life that is not regulated by the outside environment. It's vital, you remember. Every facet of you is connected to every other facet of yourself. And so when you nurture your mental, your emotional, your physical, your spiritual well-being, you're giving yourself a remarkable gift of becoming the best version of yourself. Is it? Excuse me. Had a little crash here. I guess I got excited. You're giving your, yourself a remarkable gift of becoming Having the best version, and isn't that the greatest Christmas gift you could give yourself? Transformation is where we want to get to in our wholeness. How can we transform ourselves to be better able to embrace wholeness more regularly? Number one, utilize your spiritual practices, whatever they are. Are you... Are you doing meditation? Are you, um, do you do contemplation, visioning, prayer, speaking affirmations? Doing your practices regularly will give you a clearer awareness of your consciousness, which is where wholeness starts. I'd also tell you if you don't practice, and I heard that you're having something after this service on forgiveness, that's another practice. Gratitude, forgiveness, compassion. How can you do that? And for me, this time of year gives us a lot of opportunity to practice those um, gifts that we're given. For me, I recently, I've been doing some work with a, um, uh, a chiropractor who does a program called uh, Soma Somata Respiratory Integration. And I had a session of that this week, and as part of it, uh, came up with an affirmation. And that affirmation has, well, I know will make a difference and is making a difference in me right now. Because that affirmation, when things are going a little haywire, getting a little tweaked, I say, I am the embodiment of joy and playfulness. I want to remember that, folks. I want to remember that this life is joy. This life, and of course, if you know anything about Mile High Church, you know that's the title of a book that our uh, emeritus minister, Dr. Roger Teal, wrote. But this life is joy. It's just we forget it. Rachel Naomi Remen, a physician, therapist, and author of Kitchen Wisdom for the Soul, or Kitchen Wisdom, writes, Wholeness is never lost. It is only forgotten. Integrity rarely means that we need to add something to ourselves. It is more an undoing than a doing, a freeing ourselves from beliefs we have about who we are and ways we've been persuaded to fix ourselves to know who we genuinely are. Even after many years of seeing, thinking, and living one way. So we can't use age as, a, as an excuse. After many years of seeing, thinking, and living one way, we can reach past all that to claim our integrity and live in a way that we may never have expected to live. Thank you, Rachel Naomi Remen, for that reminder. So as I wrap up, I want to invite you to try some of these suggestions for getting in touch with your wholeness. Give up perfection. Let stuff go. Find your people and places and make sure one of those places is nature. Be curious like that young child looking at that caterpillar. And above all, folks, trust your inner guidance system to always bring you back to wholeness when you stay off track. So for me, as I shared with you, my reminder of my inner guidance system is my personal affirmation. I am the embodiment of joy and playfulness. You're going to have lots of opportunities 
during this holiday season to practice. Thank you. Let's have a little prayer to close this part of our service. We are with, we're here in the presence of spirit. We know spirit is in this room that each person is in, whether they be in person or they are online. I know spirit is in each one of us. Spirit is reminding us of our wholeness, reminding us of our allness and saying, trust, trust yourself. No one knows you better than you. And spirit wants the very best from each one of us. So I can let this prayer go because I know spirit is the active force within each one of us. So I let this go and I let it be. And together we affirm, and so it is. And now we have special music. Just remember, nobody has to be perfect, okay? <laughs> That's what the sermon was all about. <laughs> We're going to sing What the World Needs Now is Love. Feel free to join us. When I first heard him at his church in San Francisco, and, and even as a young person, I remembered how I felt uh, about the way he spoke. Uh, it was like a, a meditation, a, a guided meditation rather than a, a sermon. So it really impressed me. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little of. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just for some, but for everyone. Lord, we don't need another mountain. There are mountains and hillsides enough to climb. There are oceans and rivers enough to cross, enough to last till the end of time. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little of. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just for some but for everyone. Lord, we don't need another meadow. There are cornfields and wheat fields enough to grow. There are sunbeams and moonbeams enough to shine. Oh, listen, Lord, if you want to know what the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little love. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just for some, but for everyone. No, 
not just for some, but for everyone. Okay, great music. Thank you. Yes, what the world needs is love. So right now we're going to have our giving and I'm sure you know all the different ways that you can give. But what I'd like to do with you is to share the conscious giving affirmation. So whether you put money in the the plate or you put money or you, you give online or maybe you're an automatic giver what I would say is if you are an automatic giver or you're giving online put your hand on your heart as we say this giving affirmation divine spirit is the source of all of our gifts it goes forth to heal prosper and bless it returns to me multiplied abundantly. As I share my good, I accept my greater good. And so it is. Thank you so much for the gifts that have been given. We we bless them. We know they multiply. We know that this beautiful center grows abundantly and everything that is necessary comes to it. Thank you for the generosity, the generosity of hearts, the generosity of spirits. We let this go and so it is. I guess I'm introducing I'm inter I'm introducing the peace song. So let's let's stand for the peace song, please.
And, and so we leave this place knowing that spirit has been in the hearts and minds of each person present, each person on mind. We, we know that, that as we step into our week, that we feel that presence and we practice, we practice being whole and we show ourselves as whole beings, members of that divine universe that we live in. Thank you. And so it is.